once in a blue moon, you'll see something no one's seen before. We were astonished when the mantids turned to face its predator. But I remember looking at the cameraman, both of us with our jaws on the floor, just thinking, what the heck is going on? I'm Nick Easton. I'm a, a wildlife filmmaker at the BBC's Natural History Unit. A few years ago, I directed a shoot featuring orchid mantids. Life story was about the different stages in an animal's life. So we wanted to capture the moment an animal was actually born. Praying mantises are predatory insects. They're very engaging because of the way they turn their heads. There's something about their eyes that it makes you feel like they're following you. But of all the mantids, I think the orchid mantids are the, are the prettiest. And they are disguised as a flower, essentially. In their juvenile stage, when they're first born, they're born bright red and black. The theory is that that might put some predators off. They look like a poisonous animal, or perhaps they look like another animal in the environment, which doesn't taste good. And so the, the mantis we see at the end is the same species, but obviously looks extremely different. I think it's gone through three or four different moltings by that stage. And it's not quite adult, but it's, I think it's the final stage before adulthood. And it's the stage that looks most flower-like, most orchid-like. And I think that disguise, obviously it stops them getting predated by, by predators like birds. But I think the key purpose is that they can hide from their prey. So they hide in flowers and wait for insects, flying pollinators to arrive and then they grab them. So it's beautiful, but it's devious. Mantids lay these strange kind of egg cases and they're full of little eggs developing inside. And then on one particular day, all these mantids appear and they abseil their way out. And that's what we wanted to capture. But it was one of those strange shoots where the thing we went to capture turned out not to be the most interesting thing about it. So we ended up capturing the interaction between a mantis and a predator, a little jumping spider. Whether an individual mantis survives or not is partly a matter of chance. Whether it's spotted by a predator. Jumping spiders are one of the most engaging little mini beasts you'll ever encounter. They've got lots of pairs of eyes, but there's two big pairs that stare straight at you. Um, and they can't move their eyes within their heads, so they have to turn their whole body. And there's something about that which gives them a real character. Um, and they, they jump from place to place, hence their name, and they're constantly on the hunt. And they leave this little trail of web, as you'd expect, but that's almost like a breadcrumb trail or a safety line. Um, so they can find their way back, or if they get blown off by a gust of wind, they're still safe. And so if one moves into an area with little baby orchid mantids, it won't be long before one of them falls victim to a jumping spider. There seems to be no escape. We saw this chase go on and we weren't sure how it was going to end. We assumed the spider would catch the mantid. But at, at one point when the mantid clearly wasn't going to get away, it turned round and started to do this kind of weird dance display. But this mantis has a surprising line in self-defense. Kung Fu, praying mantis style. Once in, once in a blue moon, you'll see something no one's seen before. We were astonished when the mantis started behaving the way it was, you know, because we'd been watching these mantids day in, day out. And so when this one turned on the spot, turned to face its predator, uh, we were really not expecting it. Uh, and thankfully we were rolling at that very moment, but then it starts to lift its arm. And obviously you have to be quiet when you're filming wildlife. But I remember looking at the cameraman, Alistair McEwen, and just both of us with our jaws on the floor, just thinking, what the heck is going on? Of course, it's all bluff. Trying to look bigger and confuse its enemy. But it's got away with it. It's sometimes easier to relate to, to big mammals like us, you know, like chimpanzees, but also things like elephants and, and the big cat. But actually, little creatures and insects and reptiles and amphibians are all facing the same challenges that we do. And I really like to try and convey that. So that was the challenge of that sequence, just to try and make uh, our audience engage with that character and care for its life. And I think we managed to do that. A lot of the, the techniques we use is getting on their level, getting into their world. And over time, you start to build up those little reaction shots, those moments where you realize the animal has realized something. And maybe the audience is slightly ahead of it. So they see the spider first, and then you see the moment the mantis swings around and realizes it's in trouble. 
And those daily dramas are life or death, just the same as they might be with a gazelle and a cheetah. You have to watch very carefully because if you look away for a second, you lose your subjects. That, that has happened to me numerous times, so I speak from experience. We had the camera mounted on this positioner, so we could actually wheel the camera forward and backwards. So it was a very smooth motion, it wouldn't alarm the animals, but we could also be really, really precise. On tiny subjects, obviously the plane of focus is sometimes just a millimetre deep. So it's very hard work and the cameraman, Alistair, was working constantly just adjusting the focus. But also every time you touch the camera, tiny movement on the camera when you're on a subject that small is a big movement in the shot. And so we're trying to touch the camera as little as possible, but just very gently ride the focus. You have to be careful of your breathing even. If you breathe too hard in the wrong direction, you're going to scare things. You might even blow them away or you'll move the leaf and it'll go out of focus. So it's a delicate operation. But when you film a macro or a tiny subject, and you look closely at what's going on, you do get a whole new perspective. It feels like a real privilege and actually it's some of the most rewarding filming I've done because every shot you capture, you feel like you've seen something new, seen something you have, that no one's seen before. Um, and you're welcomed into a world that we're not usually part of. And to look down the lens and see it, you know, see the scene as if it was a scene from Game of Thrones, just amazing. Just staying alive for its first few hours is a significant accomplishment for a newly hatched insect. But there's still a long way to go. With a bit of luck, in two months' time, it will be as big and beautiful as this orchid mounted. Or maybe not. After all, mantids are cannibals. We always want to tell the truth about the natural world, but obviously the truth is an endless story. It unfolds and unfolds and unfolds. And so we have to make the cut somewhere. And in this case, we had captured the predation of the young mantid by an older one. But having just engaged with our character, we did, we did debate whether it was too much, whether the audience were too far into that story to be able to, to take the death of the young one. But in the end, we decided, because there were hundreds of others and, and because actually it's our duty to tell the truth about the natural world, we should do it. You know, it might be tough, but it's a kind of a pause for thought for anyone who's viewing it. I think all, all animals are kind of the hero of their own story and they're all doing their best to survive against incredible odds, frankly. And I wonder if people have really identified with this story, the kind of David and Goliath of it. When a mantid is first born, it really is microscopic. It can stand on your finger, on the end of your finger, it's that small. And so you really don't give it much chance of survival. And it's born into a big world, you know. The jungle is full of danger, and even the very leaf it walks on is, is you know, a huge stage on which its life is playing out. You know, I wonder if that's what people have identified with that story. Because we all feel like the altar against us sometimes. <laughs>